Hello everyone and welcome to another Krebs Coho collaboration cast. Now my room is stuffy, I've tried opening the window and I don't know, it's still stuff stuffy. So if I make it through this uh, replay without suffocating, then we'll call it a good replay. Um, now let's just go on to this replay. This is a 2v2 on Lorraine, so a very popular map when we're talking about um, just balance and all that good stuff. Now I'm going to be collaborating with two very very familiar faces. Uh, one being Ryan. Say hello, Ryan. Hi, guys. Okay, so Ryan's there. That's good. And we've got also Greatness making an appearance again. She is having peanuts and water, so she is right at home, all settled in. Say hello, Greatness. <laughs> hey. <laughs> now that is Greatness. She loves her um, her snacks and stuff, so give her a bit of Grief, I suppose. <laughs> so anyway, this is a 2v2, as I said, on Lorraine. Um, we've got pretty much a four-faction showdown. So we've got PE, we've got Brits, we've got Wehrmacht, and we've got Americans. Now this is going to be two clans versing each other. One being Soul Siberian Platoon, the other being Soul Siberian, uh, not Soul Siberian, the other being Soul Nafets Jurep. Depp. <laughs> Sorry, these are very strange names. I'm sure um, Ryan will have a better time at butchering that name. We've also got Glover CZ, and I believe he is from the Czech Republic because of the CZ on his, the end of his name, and he is in the FRC clan. He's going to be playing Brits, and we have FRC Bayfec CZ playing as the Americans. Now, Tamar, Greatness, who are you going to be watching? Well, I'm going to keep my eye on the allies, but I'll mostly be watching uh, Bayfic. Okay, guys, and Ryan is going to be watching Mr. Nafets, or Nafets, or whatever he wants to call them. Now, are you guys ready to get this game started? Sure, yeah. Yep. Okay, so in five, four, three, two, and one. There we go, guys. So if we're talking about the actual tactical map, if you look at the tactical map, there is, it's quite an interesting map, there is a lot of ammunition, a lot of fuel, but the difference is, is that there's quite a bit of low and medium ammunition points, and every single fuel point is a low fuel point on this uh, map. So that is going to be quite interesting, that means that you might have slower teching, you might have slower um, advances towards tanks, um, just everything in general might be a bit slower, there might be a more heavy emphasis on infantry and that, that like. Um... So what do you guys, Tamar and Ryan, uh, what do you guys see right now? Uh, barracks and some rifles coming out. Engineers going to cap high side, I think. So going yeah, for their respective sides, anything. it looks like. Yeah, and I'm not seeing anything but PGs coming out for now. Uh, fairly standard play. Very standard. So it looks like the British are doing a very frontal push towards the center, capping the ammunition point. Um, they actually have their headquarters still set down. They might be getting a lieutenant out of that. No, I'm not sure exactly. I'm guessing they're going to be getting a lieutenant next since they already got an infantry section. I was thinking they might move that headquarters, but it looks like they won't. It looks like they're going to keep it there. I guess moving it to the front would be a bit too bold and too risky. So uh, just keeping everything back and just playing it safe right now. Now it looks like these hardy infantry section with their the recon squad with their little sniper rifle being very very hardy. I mean pretty much having no opposition whatsoever and barely taking any damage even despite not being in cover. Yeah and you've got um, you had snipe used on uh, one of the PGs uh, the G43 squad that the recon section is now moving on and it looks like the British AQ, a HQ is moving up to settle in on one of these center points here oh so that's good it's actually doing that now Ryan I know you absolutely love playing PE and like I'm sorry I've got to do this to you but uh, would you actually recommend um, say if you're versing the PE would you actually recommend like a recon squad Focusing on the most valuable person, so like a Gwer, uh, a Gwer, uh, squad with the Gwer, um upgraded. Well, even with the um, 
even with the recon squad upgrade, which is technically like a DPS downgrade for the recon squads, uh, or for the Tommies as a whole, um, even with that, the, the squad is pretty hardy, and so it becomes very hard to uh, cope with them, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. They have soldier armor, but they have more health, like, uh, like say, a rifleman would, as opposed to less, like the PGs do, so they definitely take fire pretty well. Okay, so fair enough. The British in, uh, infantry in general are very hardy, very expensive, but very hardy, as we keep on saying. Um, now, the the Axes, the Wehrmacht actually have a motorcycle. I'm not too sure about that. Like, why would they actually be going for that? I mean, it's doing a, a decent sort of job against these um, riflemen, but then again, I don't really expect to see any snipers on the field. Well, it's not solely a uh, counter to a sniper unit. I mean, <clears throat> there's many things you can do with a motorcycle that, uh, say, like, push infantry off a point, um, confuse a flank. It can be very effective. I suppose so. The only thing that just confuses yeah. me is because that Lorraine is just so urban. I mean, if you guys look, everything just funnels in into the center. You've got this main house here, which is a very big source of attention. Everything just sort of funnels in here. There's a lot of choke points and such, so I just find it a bit odd that they would use a, a motorcycle in such a very tight area. The bikes are also useful for scouting, uh, you know, British emplacements out, and they, they actually do a decent job against um, emplacements that are being built because of the number of bullets that they put out in the process. So they can be handy for that as well. And absolutely, I think uh, motorcycles are definitely one of the best things to take you out, like emplacements early on in the game, just because, as you said, lots of bullets coming out. Um, unfortunately, uh, the mortar emplacement was put down before the mo motorcycle could actually do anything, so it's quite unfortunate, the motorcycle not being able to actually do its job. And so in the north, we have just a bit of infantry trying to cap uh, away at the north, and the PGs are totally pushing them off with numbers. The Americans just cowering away because they're obviously afraid of all those guys. Yeah, field support coming up. So we might see a Stuart. Uh, not, I don't know what he's going to get barred. Yep, Bayfix's going to get bars. That's fair I've got enough. Tier 1 coming up from the... Panzer Elite as well, which, uh, you know, as we've talked about before, tends to be more of a leapfrog um, tier than it does anything else. You you put it up, and then you, instead of having to quote-unquote backtack to it, you can just upgrade things out of it as you go. I actually like, um, if you guys look in the center, there's two snipers up from the Wehrmacht. Um, very, very useful, especially in the beginning. Um, as long as you keep those guys alive, the British are going to have such a hard time at actually killing them because, I mean, the British cost so much to reinforce their guys. Their squads are so expensive. So as soon as you kill one of them, just like this right there, you know, <laughs> very huge losses. Yeah, it, you see what that motorbike was doing? He was pushing them away from the snipers, so he couldn't get a counter snipe. <laughs> That's absolutely right. So right now, one sniper has five kills on him. The other has four kills. So, wow, a lot of casual, or a lot of um, medals, kills, whatever you want to call it, right from the very beginning. Now, these snipers really need to be careful and get out of there. I know that there's an MG, but as you guys can see, one sniper going down just from not being too attentive with um, these snipers. And he's very close to losing another one. One motorbike going down. The, Ameri the allies are doing a, quite a push on the center right now. And south. Yeah, you, and and you get the PGs sweeping in from the north there to uh, try and assist the situation. The set. So that's pretty cool, just like seeing all that flying king sort of stuff going on. Good teamwork. The one, yeah, the one thing you have to be very careful of though is fighting near this uh, casualty clearing station. Really, the last thing you want to do is give Brits free sections. Yeah, I mean, like, they're doing such a good job of, like, actually taking out all these squads. Um, but, you know, <laughs> what does it mean when you, if you're just going to get them all back, right? Um, it's a good thing that the casualty clearing center was actually taken out there. Um, the Brits are in quite a bad position, considering that um, a HM or a heavy machine gun is going to be coming down very soon. And so they have to retreat. This mortar emplacement could be in a very bad position as well. And 
as we guy as you guys can see the Brits are sort of saying okay we've lost this battle we're gonna be moving out of here and bring all our stuff back maybe we can recover um, elsewhere and it looks like he's just moving a, a few feet away yeah actually an interesting point about that is just the the short move that he made um, the Ketten uh, just north of there was actually coming to tag that fuel point and the British player sat down to keep him from getting that point. That's interesting. I'm also thinking that he might have... Um, yeah, so he's also doing that and he's also putting it down on the fuel point just to uh, get those extra resources as well. So very useful. Very cool. Fortunately, that, another um, sniper. Oh, what more snipers? Oh, there he died. Oh, another kill. Ouch. So I'm thinking that, like, what do you guys think the uh, doctrines are gonna be like for these um, players? Well, Vermont has definitely gone for Blitzkrieg. Yeah, and I don't believe that I have a doctrine choice yet from the PE. I'm gonna. Probably, uh, you know, uh, standard fare for PE is Scorched Earth in team games, but uh, you also see some Louvre around the edges. That's fair enough, I would say. Um, I would actually say that the Axes are in a very bad position right now. I mean, just looking at how much they've been pushed back, they lost quite a few snipers there, quite a few men. There's uh, mines placed down. Yeah, you have uh, four men, MP44 squads moving up though, and that's that's going to help equalize against the the British infantry. Certainly, the Flamers are still going to do damage. Oh, definitely, the Flamers are doing a really good job, but with all this, with all that uh, flame damage. Oh, he's going to get a free squad. Yeah, did you guys notice the the kind of the flank on the medic bunker up north where nothing seemed to happen for a second, even though everybody seemed to be in full line of sight? In fact, I didn't really notice why what happened. It, it, the the two rifle squads and the uh, engineer squad that were standing there just kind of continued to stand there and just look at the bunker and be like, eh, I don't really <laughs> feel like it. It looks like concrete. <laughs> Sort of appreciate the moment, like, oh my god, we just got to the bunker. What should we do now? Kill it! With fire! Yeah! I find that sort of weird, like, you know, that you can actually destroy, a, you know, like a concrete building with fire. Um, Ryan, I know that in real life you lo you're an engineer and um, you work a lot with concrete. We've had this conversation yesterday. You actually like to work a lot with concrete. Can flames actually do anything to concrete? Um, actually, most flame tests are based off of concrete. So, as a random nerdy piece of information, like when people are doing fire tests on houses, they compare it to how concrete burns, which it, basically it doesn't. So, for the most part, not so working. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a bit weird, but the funny thing is, like, I remember once on the forums, um, you know, they were just talking about balance, and I believe Noun, or one of the moderators, jumped in, and they were saying, like, if we were ever to balance the game, and it was to come between realism, so the realism of World War II, or actual gameplay, it would come down to gameplay, and so definitely that situation there, flames can damage concrete, apparently, so... It, Obviously, you need to have some sort of counter to these bunkers apart from explosives like mortars. And so, yeah, flames do some damage, apparently. Yeah, and we do have a Doctrine choice up from the Panzer Elite. They've been booby-trapping points and buildings, so it is scorched earth like what I...